everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn. On this episode, we're going to recap our thoughts and our comments about Creatures Fest that just wrapped up yesterday. There's so much to cover in this episode, lots to discuss, so let's jump in and let's get started. Everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn. Today I'm excited. I just returned from Creatures Fest about 15 minutes ago. And what's the first thing I do? I ring up my buddy, Mr. Vincent LaRusso, so we could talk about it. How you doing, buddy? I gotta say, I'm, I admire your priorities. You know? <laughs> well, you texted me during my drive home from the airport. And you're like, oh, do you want to do a chat? And I was like, yeah, 10, 15, I'll be home. So let's do it. So I'm literally yeah. in the house for, I think, 15 minutes and, and we're already chatting about this. And speaking of house, I got to be, I'm, I got to recalibrate my, my, my <laughs> eyes and my senses. Like all I see is a Yankee symbol behind your head. It's like, we're used to all, the, all your fans and stuff are used to, well, now I know you're a Yankee fan, <laughs> but um, they're used to all the different memorabilia and stuff. So for those who are confused, let me just set the record straight for my friend. <laughs> He's having some work done on his house, so mm -hmm. he had some painting done. Some other, so fear not, the stuff not. will be back on the wall, maybe in different configurations. Maybe it's, it's actually all different. around me, <laughs> all around yeah. here, but it's yeah. off the walls. And it's funny yeah. that the only thing up is my Yankee dartboard because, and you know this, Finn, I'm really not into sports at all anymore. And I tried to yeah. get my wife to agree to take that down because I don't really care about it anymore. And she's like, but we like playing darts. I'm like, but I don't really love the Yankees at all anymore. <laughs> so um, it's interesting. That's the one thing that stayed, but that's because she wanted to keep the dartboard. So maybe I'll paint it. I don't know. So is that a real dartboard or is it like one of those like, you know, foam darts or, you know? No, no, it's real darts. In fact, that was one of the things when I had the wall painted behind me, there had to be 150 little darts. That's what I was just going to ask. So yeah. you really want to like, you just got the house done. I know. And you, and you want to like start pinning your walls. Why don't you just get one of those? Other kind of dart. I, I know dart purists would be like, "Oh no, you can't do that!" You know, <laughs> exactly. kind of official darts, but I, I, I figured I could do some kind of like maybe like a cork board underneath it or something like that. But um, yeah, I used yeah. to have picture frames around when my kids were younger and they try to play darts. Which, whoosh, whoosh, there goes the picture frame and crack. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> so it's not necessarily yeah. the best thing, but that's the only thing that remains on the walls right now, <laughs> literally. Right. Right. But um, yeah, yeah. So like I said, I just got back from Creatures Fest, and you know. It was kind of funny because for me, the party actually started a day early. I just want to mention this before we jump into Creature Fest, right? So Thursday, we had what I'm calling the pre-Creatures Fest gathering for you and I, right? And going to the Who at Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was like, oh, where are you going? Was, yeah, that's right. It seems like that's, a lifetime ago, right? But it was only, what, four that, days ago? <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. So that, that was fun. A little, what I'm calling a pre-Creature pre Fest gathering. yeah. And I know yeah. you were you were thoroughly thrown over that concert, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I spoke to a bunch of friends, a bunch of my music friends, and the one thing I just kept saying is, I can't believe how good Roger Daltrey sang. Yeah, I can't believe how he sang. He was like, his voice to me at seventy eight years old sounds better than some people at you know singers at fifty. You know, I yep. just don't know. And I know Roger had a rough period, you know, maybe ten years ago or so. And for those who were thinking about, it, I was. I was talking to Super M, I think, uh, mm -hmm. on on Saturday, and I was telling him because he was kind of on the fence. And I said, "Man, if you had any doubts about seeing the Who, you know, I would go because he sounded incredible. And to me, when you go to see any band, it's really in the end, it's all about the vocalist and how good Great. the vocalist sounds. You know, yeah. um, the one thing for me, uh, and I know you're going to voice your opinion about something, is that you know they 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 have electronic drums or they're acoustic drums so people say they don't know it's a dw kit 
it's an acoustic kit with electronic heads because it clearly had Roland and he had Roland symbols, mm -hmm. rubber symbols. You know, it's the who to me. And I get, you know, Townsend, I remember at one point, maybe 20 years ago, he said he couldn't tour anymore because his hearing was so bad and he had to protect whatever he had left. Um, and they probably would keep in the stage. Volume. And I think Daltrey's had hearing issues also. Yeah, yeah. So I get, you know, at this age, they can't have that, you know, the cymbals are very harsh. And, you know, you can get those shields that go around the drums. But but I was just waiting for that Who power. And, I, and as a Who fan all my life, practically, you know, and watching all the old videos and hearing, and they were at one time I think one of the loudest, if not the loudest band on the on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't feel that sheer like power coming at the garden. However, you know, hearing the orchestra and and for those who love Tommy, and I know I told you at one point you got. I want you to listen to Tommy from top mm -hmm. to bottom and really give your opinion because I think if you know that album, you really appreciate the first part because it is in three parts. Yep. Um, and they did stuff from Quadrophenia. So the orchestra, obviously, it lent itself well to that stuff. Um, but to me, um, I just missed that kind of, you know, that sheer power that came from the band. And I know it's, you have your opinion. It, no, it's, well, it's funny that you say that because with Creatures Fest, that was one of the things, and I'll get into it when we start talking the details, at times, damn, it was loud. Oh, my God. Like, right now, I'm like, my ears are ringing. Um, somebody I saw over the weekend was like, you should be putting cotton in your ear. And I never do. And last night, for the first time as I'm watching a show, I'm literally like covering my ear, you know, to like folding no it. To, no, no, no. It, it was loud. So you're, you're right. To me, the volume of the Who concert was like perfect for me, especially as it we was. get all to hear. Yeah, yeah. So I had no complaints about that. You know, I wish they would have done some more of their hits. Um, you know, to me to go see the Who and them not do my generation. I'm just like, yeah, how, how could that happen? It's like Kiss not doing rock and roll all night to me, you know? So, um, I was stunned they didn't do that. Uh, they didn't do I Can't Explain. They didn't do Substitute. So there was a few songs that for me as what I'll call a casual Who fan was like, how could they not be doing some of those classics, you know? Um, but saying that, I still enjoyed it. Al Bundy looks great for his age. You know, he played great. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know. So people are confused. <laughs> Mike thinks, Mike thinks uh, Pete, Towns Pete Towns looks like Al Bundy. And I think Roger Daltrey looks like my dad. So, yes. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And we had a lot of good laughs about that that yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, no, but it was still, I'm glad you were there, you know. Um, you know, the one thing I was thinking the whole time, and I told Super M this, is that, you know, Pete Townsend, this man wrote all these, this music, and it's yep. just an incredible body of work. And when you hear it live like that, you know, it's just, it just still blows my mind, you know. And it's not just music. You really listen to the lyrical content. And I've never been a, a, a real lyric guy. Mm -hmm. I recently actually read the lyrics to Won't Get Fooled Again. I'm like, oh, is that what this is about? Like, gotcha. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, you know, I never really paid attention to it, you know? Right, right, right. And, yeah. and um, you know, it's just it's just incredible to me. So, yeah, that was, I mean, for me and, and for you, a launch into your weekend was mm -hmm. awesome. Right. And so, you know, what's funny, though, is I had a flight to go to Nashville at 8 a.m. Friday morning. Right. So yeah. we're at the concert the night before. I know I'm not going to get home till after midnight. So I have to finish packing. And as I'm driving home, my daughter texts me that Disney Plus, they dropped the first two episodes of Kenobi, which was supposed to be at 3 a.m. They dropped them at oh, midnight. No. And I'm not talking Kenobi Fest. Kenobi right, Fest right. is different than Kenobi. Right? Oh, as, not Kenobi Fest with has the not, Star Wars product. Exactly. So of not course, affiliated. now I'm like, all right, I've been waiting years for Kenobi to come out. First, it was going to be a movie. Now it's a streaming thing. And I'm like, it's dropping at midnight. I'm getting home at five after 12. I can't not watch it. So my daughter and I sat on the couch until two o'clock in the morning watching the first two episodes of Kenobi. Oh, yeah. And the reason I bring this up is because by Friday, so now I go to bed, it's like 2.30. Thursday night into Friday morning and my flights at eight o'clock and I got to be leaving the house at like six o'clock in the morning. So I basically got no sleep Thursday night into Friday. Yeah. Like hey, after what I knew was going to be, that's the start of what I knew was going to be a crazy weekend. Right. So I was like, when I got there on Friday, it was like, I literally just went up to the hotel room and just like took a nap. I hate to say that I sound like an old man, but I was like, yeah. I'm taking a little nap here before the crazies begin because it was a very, very crazy three days. Um, for me, a lot of fun. We'll talk about the things I liked, some of the things I thought was just okay, but I'm freaking exhausted. It felt like a Kiss Cruise on land compacted into three days. I am exhausted, mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, no, but I, 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 and then you come home, you literally step your toe in the door yeah. and you're talking to me. Yeah, I, like, I, literally, I put my bag down and I came down here and said, all right, let's start chatting. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, but, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I'll say this also, Ben, I was blown away by how many people came up to me during the couple of days there. And I just, I, you know, I want to say I, I was humbled. I, I want to thank everybody who came to me. I love the show. I love the show. Where's Vin? I love the show. Where's Vin? Is Vin here with you? I love the show. Uh, there had to be easily 75 to 100 people that stopped me. Um, some wanted to take pictures. And um, I just want to take a moment and say thank you to all those people because it was really cool. And a lot of them were asking for you. And um, I told them that you had gigs and, you know, you didn't want to be with me. You saw me Thursday night. Enough is enough with me. You know, you were at my house the week Actually, it was, before. <laughs> yeah, was it three? No, was it two times in one week or three? Uh, three times because we'd seen Peter Chris in the city. That's right, also. That's right. So you saw me Friday, Sunday, Thursday. You're like, enough's enough. I got gigs. I don't need to see this guy anymore. But a lot of people were asking for you. And I, it was really nice. Oh. Like everybody was super friendly, super nice. We go. We always talk about this. We talk about when we were younger, we were teenagers, and we hang out in my basement or, or, or your house. And I mean, did you ever think at any time in your life that you'd be a part of something where never, you know, recognized as you know, I'm not gonna call you a celebrity. I mean, they may, but that might be taken. Not at all. But, <laughs> not, but, not but in be recognized thing. amongst. I mean, because listen, this isn't new for you. You were doing in the early '90s um, at the Kiss convention. You had tables. You know, yep. you were selling product and stuff like that. Yep. Um, and you did that for many years. Um, even when you weren't doing the convention stuff, you were, you had your own little, you know, Kiss merchandise. You know, it was official that you would do it. And you made me a website America. like in 1996 or 1997 before people, mm -hmm. most people even had computers. Yeah, it was, <laughs> that was, yeah, that's true. I I, mm -hmm. I tend to forget that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so. No, yeah, I don't forget so. that because I said that they, because they had a whole expo of this, you know, three day creatures fest. And I said to somebody over the weekend, I am so thankful that I'm not lugging that crap around. And cause that's a lot of work. All those dealers that are there all weekend, that is a lot of work. You're on your feet all day. You're lugging that stuff from wherever you live in this case to Nashville. Um, you're constantly, you know, talking with people all day. That's a lot of work. And I said, thank God I don't do that anymore. Yeah. Well, look, it's something that you did. You got a lot of enjoyment. You did get yeah. to meet a lot of people during that time. Agreed. And yeah. you know, to me, it was like, maybe that was kind of the bridge into what you're doing now. I mean, you know, Could you be. kept that his fandom going, your passion for loving the band. And that's what we always talk about when we, yep. when we do this stuff, you know, even when we're going to be critical, that doesn't mean we don't love the band or love the product. We exactly. love the individual. So, and you don't have to love everything the band does, in. right? You don't have to love right. everything the band does. You know, you know, I shared this story with you and, and, and I want to make sure I say it here while we're recording. Um, Cause I called you while I was away there. Um, the first day I was there, I was at the front desk. It was, I think this is hilarious. And one of the women at the desk, she's probably 22, 23 years old. She's like, Kiss is here? They're the guys that wear makeup, right? So I was like, oh, all right, I'm impressed. It's a young kid. I just, she at least knows who kisses. Are they performing in makeup at the hotel? And the guy that was there was like, well, no, you know, it's not all the band members. It's some of the original guys. It's some other guys. Um, and then he goes, and if you see them, you'll think they're your grandfather. It's not the guys. Right, in the right, right. And I just yeah. thought that, that that was like the start of my three days there. And I'm like, well, that's pretty cool that this young kid knew who Kiss was, makeup and all of that. Mm -hmm. And the guy's response now, they look like your grandfather was actually pretty funny yeah. to me. So yeah. um, it was just a funny way for me to start the uh, the three days. But, you know, the first. Well, let's let, let's start here. Let's start yeah. here. I don't know all the individuals. I, I think Neil Davis is one of them. Yeah. Uh, maybe more. But. Let's start by just thanking the people who yes. put this stuff together because yes. there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into. I can't even imagine, nor do I know, mm -hmm. the amount of phone calls, emails, everything that they got to do to organize, negotiate, yes. to put these events together for us fans. I mean, so I wasn't there, but from afar, I could just easily think about, hey, man, the amount of work it is to give us this kind of product, you know, three days that you had. Yep. Um, it's incredible. So if you know some other names or whatever, uh, yeah, it's it's Neil, else, but... it's Neil Davis, it's Jay Jakowski, I think is the way you pronounce his last name, uh, Rosie Luck and Brian. I forgive me, Brian, I don't remember your last name, but but I think it's the four of them that that work on it. And Brian you're... Bell, uh, yes, Brian Bell, yes, you're right. Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah. thank you, not the so... Carvel guy, That's no, our friend. <laughs> not at all, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. um, but you know, this is. You know, I'm glad you brought this up because I saw online while I was there that some people were giving me a little bit of a hard time. Oh, Ace didn't do the set he said he was going to. Vinny didn't do this or whatever. You know, there's a lot of that that's out of Neil's control. And all I kept thinking all weekend is 
he had to manage a ton of egos in all these different bands. And that's, I'm not saying that as a criticism, right? Everybody has an ego to some level, right? You've got all these different artists there. You've got the different dealers that, that you know, have certain expectations. You've got the, the pain fans who have certain expectations. And everybody comes with expectations and egos of their own. And he has to manage all of that and put off something to keep everything as close to on time as possible. And, you know, for me, I could look and I could say, gee, I wish there was more announcements about this or that or whatever. But, you know, I can never, ever, ever do what this guy did and his team did this weekend. Yeah. And you know, kudos to him and the entire team. I thought it was run very well and last night at the end of the show bruce was like neil thank you to see you this is top notch and some of the artists that i spoke to there was like you know neil was great so yeah some fans may type things online just know that most of the people that were there and the artists that were there all had a tremendous appreciation for what was done this weekend and some of the history that was made let's be honest i mean some of these things may never happen again but i'm sure some of them won't ever happen again so um yeah you know, that's, Ooh, you know, this sounds like, you know, there's something juicy in that the way you made that. No, no, no. I'm just, <laughs> you know, when, when we get some of the deals, I can't imagine some of these mm. things ever happening again, but Hey, never say never, I guess. Right. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you know, to me, it started. So like I said, Friday, I got there, I go upstairs, I take my little one hour nap. Uh, I hear that funny thing with the woman there. And then the first thing that's, is going to kick off is the MTV unplugged recreation that they did out by the pool, which I really enjoyed. It was like very laid back. It's like literally I'm standing by the steps and 20 feet behind me is a pool, right? And there's a lot of trees around and it's a beautiful day outside. And I'm just like, this is a nice way, like very casual, fun type of atmosphere and a beautiful day outside. It's a good way to get my day, the, the, the three days started. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then we knew beforehand that Bruce was going to come up on stage and do a couple of songs with them. I was surprised actually the songs Bruce did was, um, well, who is them? First of all, when you say, Oh, I don't follow what you mean by them. You said that they did a recreation of the, some plug. Who, oh, okay. Who oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, thank you for the clarification. It was, um, Steve Brown from Trickster, Brandon Fields from Minefield. Uh, forgive me. I don't know who the drummer is. And then they rotated a couple of guys from sister's doll, um, would, would be on stage as well. And then there was some special guests like chips enough came up and did, um, see you tonight. And he played bass for that song. Um, so, but it was, it was just a very relaxed, cool atmosphere. And, um, again, there was announced beforehand that Bruce was going to join the band for a couple of songs. And honestly, I figured I'd, he'll probably do like Domino or you know, something from his era. And they start doing Domino and he's not on stage. I'm like, hmm, that's surprising. And then he joins and he does Sure Knows Something, World Without Heroes and Rock Bottom. I'm like, oh, that, that's an interesting choice of songs mm. that Bruce kind of guessed it on. And you know, it wasn't Every Time I Look at You, it wasn't I Still Love You, it wasn't Domino, it was the 70s classic era stuff, or even though I know World Without Heroes is 1981, but um, that surprised me a little bit, but I, it was still cool. I mean, to me, Bruce is part of that whole unplugged thing. And um. You can just see him. It wasn't just him sitting in with the guys I was saying. It, he literally brought his entire band out, which I didn't expect. And, um, you know, that, that band is top notch. And it was the, to me that just started first hour of performances. Like, all right, this is already I'm having fun. Right. So did you see any of those videos online that I posted? I, I did see them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it did look I was I was wondering because I'm like, is this outside or is this like like, you know, like you're in an atrium kind of thing. Right. Nope. The it, was, was it was outside. Good. Yeah, it was yeah. totally. It did, look, it did look cool the way that, yeah. you know, the, just the, the background and just having that, you know, and how was the sound? Like I think, you know, I was, I ended up very close to the stage, which is a funny story because I was like four or five people deep and some of the people there saw me and was like, Hey, Mike, we love your videos. Get in front of me. And I was like, no, I'm not getting in front of you. I'm here. I'm four people deep. Like, no, we want to get good videos from you. We want to watch Get In Front of Me so your videos is better. I was like, no, no, you were here first. And they like insisted. And it happens with a couple of people. So I ended up being closer than I anticipated. And I realized about halfway through the show that I was pretty much equal with the speakers that they had facing out to the crowd. So for me, there were times that the guitar sounded a little low but it was unfair for me to say that if it sounded like that to everybody else because again i was kind of very in fact i was probably hearing the the feed going to the band as much or more than the feed going out to the fans right right I so, yeah so but i saying that i didn't hear anybody complaining about it but i just i noticed that as i was watching i'm like all right i'm hearing the feed from two different places here so but now whatever one of the overall questions i have is how many people attended the event do you know around 
I'm so bad with this stuff. You know, if I say 700, it could have been nine. It could have been five. You know, I'm going to say 700 because that kind of keeps me safe. But um, mm. I'm bad with that type of stuff. If you if you have 30 or 40 people in a room, that's a lot easier for me to estimate. Yeah. This, I just uh, wonder if you heard numbers and 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 for this kind of event, was it did it feel like 500 plus people watching this? Uh, for for the unplugged thing, no, probably not. Uh, again, it was outside, it was around the pool, so I'm going to say there's maybe a couple hundred people out there. Is okay. my guess, okay. you know. Yeah. But there were people like off to my left hand side, uh, right of the stage. There was hotel rooms over there, and I know a couple of people that like literally just pulled up chairs on their porch and just sat on the porch and just watched. It, you know, it's, yeah. which to me was a cool thing, also. You know. Um, in fact, I joked around with some of those guys like, did you know when you got this room, you can be overlooking the stage? And they're like, no, we just knew we had a pool view, you know, and it That's worked awesome. out nice. Yeah, it was, it was a nice way to kind of just sit on your patio, have a drink and watch some Kiss songs being performed. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I want to say this and I wish I recorded this and I didn't. Um, and shame on me for not thinking of this ahead of time. You know, if you listen to MTV Unplugged, Paul's version of I Still Love You on that. First off, that's a tough song to sing, I would think. Second off, when the breakdown in the middle and kind of like, I still love, and he goes on, you know, and Brendan from Sister Doll said he was, you know, he's singing it, Sisters Doll. And he's like, he's like, you know, hey, before the song starts, he's like, I'm no Paul Stanley, but I'm going to give this a shot. And he did, uh, I'm going to say that might have been, in my opinion, the vocal performance of the weekend. The vocal performance he did on that. At the end of the song, Bruce Kulik now was done with his part. He's off to the side watching. And Bruce Kulik's standing on the side of the stage at the end. And he's, he's like bowing, like, wow. And I was like, I hope he caught that because I'm like, that's a pretty freaking cool moment. And I know a lot of the fans who are watching were also like, wow, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I... No disrespect to him. I was like, yeah, is he going to be able to pull that off? I would say that about anybody who's trying to sing that part. And um, he did a damn good job on that. Damn good. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, one other thing I'll say before we get into the Ace cameo there. So it was to me, I mentioned before, Chips Enough came up from Enough's Enough. And, you know, I wasn't sure how much he knew Kiss songs. And it was kind of fun just seeing him. I got the impression he might not have known the song See You Tonight the way we do, you know, he might have loosely known it. And they were kind of like, you could see like off to the side, like I guess telling him what key it's in or, and what notes, but it was like kind of fun just even seeing somebody like that, you know, kind of being like, all right, Hey, I'm going to get, get up on stage and play see you tonight with these guys. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, so to me, that just sets the tone of having fun. You know, I don't mm -hmm. expect picture perfect performances in these things, although chip was great. Um, it's about having fun. Mm. So which leads me so, to Ace, but go ahead, you first. No, I was going to say, so who, who sang most of the performances for this? Uh, Steve Brown actually sang a lot. Um, Brent, Brendan from Sisters Doll sang some of the songs as well, if I remember right. Um, but I know Steve, uh, and you know, um, Brandon Fields sang, I think, some of the Gene songs as well, if I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember Brandon Fields singing um, Plaster Casta uh, and I think Going Blind. So um mm -hmm. You know, but uh, all of them, I think, did a good job. And, you know, Steve Brown, who's the guitar player from Trickster, um, Tokyo Motor Fist, um, he's, he's got a good voice and he's a fun guy to me to watch on stage. So it was just a whole fun performance. Mm. Okay, yeah. cool. Now, cool. I, I got tipped off before the performance started that Ace was going to be joining them for 2000 mm -hmm. Man. That wasn't originally planned? That was not announced, No. That was not announced. And from what I understand, it was decided pretty much day of type of thing. You know, even if it wasn't day of, there was certainly no rehearsal for that beforehand. You know, so, and you know, a lot of people who are Ace fans know Ace doesn't really rehearse much anyway. So, you know, kind of coming in, all right, 2000 Man's not a song that's normally in a set list. How is this going to go? And he starts playing the song. And instead of playing the intro chords, Sounded like he, to me, like that he was playing the chorus and he's looking around at everybody else on the stage. Like, come on guys, what are you doing? Are you going to start playing? And then everybody just kind of kicked in. And, and to me, look, it wasn't perfect, but honestly, I did not care. Now, maybe so I'm not curious to see your percep perception watching it on a YouTube video at home, but here it is. I'm 20 feet away from Ace up on stage doing 2000 man acoustic, something I'd never been in person seeing him do before. I was having fun. 
It didn't matter. It didn't have to be perfect. It did not matter to me at all. But what was your perception watching it on YouTube? Well, I mean, look, if something is going to be off the cuff and they're, and they're going to just try something, you, you know, you can't expect perfection. If, mm-hmm. if something's rehearsed, if you know the band's rehearsed, and it's a mess up, look, people, you mess up. I mess up all the time when I perform. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. Shit happens, you know? Yep. But um, if it was just sort of like an impromptu jam where they just came up and do it and, and you see a little bit of something different, you know, that you know creates whatever it is to make it even yeah. more special, you say, you know what yeah. I mean? I'd be okay with that, you know, um, especially if he wasn't supposed to be up there. Um, right. So right. it was never announced he was going to be up there. So to me, that was a bonus. And if it wasn't perfect, I really didn't care. Not one bit. Yeah. I, not once did I sit there saying or stand there saying, "Ga should not be up here right now." You know, it was to me. I'm going to say pretty much the highlight of the acoustic performance, simply because it was Ace, and it was like right. you know. Uh, no complaints at all. I saw people online making comments on the video. Um, I did not care. And I don't think a single person there cared at all. You know, that's the difference between watching a YouTube video and being there. When you're in the moment and you're excited, perfection is not necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm listening to a live album, I expect perfection. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to me, that was a good start. And at that point, it ended like at six o'clock. And we knew that that night was going to be Ace Frehley was the headliner. So I took some time to kind of just go grab something to eat. I went back up to my room for a little bit. Um, I think I caught the last two songs of Enough's Enough, who was playing before Ace. So I basically got in in time to see Ace perform that night. Um, Of course, again, out the night before, early flight. I just needed some decompression time uh, before I saw Ace Frehley perform. Now, are you aware of what they planned on doing with the Ace show? For this shit? No, I do not. No. All right. So I bought a ticket late. I bought a ticket in April once Peter Chris was announced. But I know in the weeks before that, you were allowed to vote on some of the songs in the set list. Like, for example, I remember one of the votes was like for three different songs on his 78 solo album. And if I remember right, and again, I didn't vote because I didn't have a ticket yet, but it was like, What's on Your Mind? I'm in Need of Love, Speeding Back to My Baby, like that type of stuff. Um, you were able to vote on a cover that he'd do, whether it was like Do Ya or um, Rock and Roll Hell, you know, stuff like that. And honestly, I was hoping to hear him do Do Ya, which he didn't. Um, he didn't do anything that I'm aware of from those votes. Although he said after doing She, oh, that's one you guys wanted to hear. You know, that's, that's one you guys chose. And I'm like, hmm, all right, I don't remember that being on the vote. But since I didn't partake, I could be wrong. But I mentioned that because for me, there was a, small tinge of disappointment but was completely offset by the fact that peter chris joined him (laughs) and i was thinking about that flying home today i'm like all right if you told me ace would do what's on your mind and uh do you or he'd play two songs with peter chris what would i choose i don't even have to think about that right i'm gonna say two songs with peter chris no offense or buts about that so but i know again i see some people online making comments about that it didn't matter to me. I'll take the two songs with Peter Chris seven days well, a week. What are the comments? What are the comments that they, they wanted him to do? That, yeah, that, that it was it was discussed that it would be a unique set list and it wasn't. And um, yeah, yes, I wish he did those unique songs also. But again, when they announced that at first, Peter Chris wasn't going to guess what Ace Frehley. Now, uh, how many songs did he do total? 15. Okay, Ish. so did he do his usual ace set? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. You know, I know he opened up with Rip It Out, uh, Parasite. I know he closed with Deuce. There was Detroit Rock City in there. You know, so, did, so do, this... did he do your favorite, Cold Gin? He did Cold Gin, of course, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. He, I don't recall him doing Rock Soldiers, so I don't think he did that. Um, it was basically, he did She. That was a, a unique one. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it was a basic set list, except for when Peter came out and he did Hard Luck Woman, which I thought was freaking cool to see them do that. And then Peter yeah, got I think up. I was, Go ahead. Did, 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 I, from what I remember, I got to remember everything I watched. Was, mm-hmm. I looked like Peter was a little lost lyrically on some of the stuff. I, I think. Yeah, probably a little bit. Um, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. I get lost lyrically as I sing along. So, (laughs) you know, again, those things don't bother me. It's different watching it on a YouTube clip when you're there 
And you're like, no, I get that part of it. The yeah. two of them are on stage together. And it's the first time I've seen them on stage together myself personally since 2000. Yeah. I'm ecstatic. I am ecstatic. Yeah. You know, for all the lyrics you want, I don't care. You know, that, that's just me. I understand yeah. that's not other people, but that's just me. I was freaking having the time of my life. Yeah. yeah. And then, and you, weren't, and you weren't watching Dirty Dancing. I wasn't watching Dirty Dancing. <laughs> You get the uh, yes, I had the time hey, of my life. <laughs> do, I <never> be <laughs> do I get the reference? A little, little upset with that question there. I don't know, you know. Fucking uh, Kenobi boy. I don't <laughs> only watch one fucking franchise. Yeah, I'm familiar with the franchise, thank you. And the yeah. song, come on, that song was freaking all over the radio. But um okay. yeah. I um look, people didn't know either also if Peter Chris would play drums and after Hard Luck Woman, he gets up and he's kind of walking off the stage. And I think some people are like, is that it? Is it done? Because they don't say anything. He just gets up and walks off the stage. And then you could see him going around the drum set. And you're like, no way. No way. This is going to be great. And he gets back there and they do um, Strange Race. Strange Race. Strange Race, which yeah. he sings and plays drums. And I was like, all right, this is a bonus now. Now I'm seeing Peter play drums. This is a bonus. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to let you give some insights and thoughts. says Because I'm sure you watched that video. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, yeah. Again, how often do we see Peter play drums? Yep. You know, and um, you know, I, I could, I could see like, like, or and I could see if I was there, the excitement that must have been in the room. Yep. You know, again, you got Ace and Peter on the stage together. You know, for the first time, like you said, what's it, two thousand? I know you're, you're yep. better. For, well, for me, yeah, uh, for me, it was two thousand. Um, they did do an Eddie Trunk party seven, eight, nine years ago or whatever, where they performed together. But that right. was, you know, for all intents and purposes, there was only a couple hundred people there, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he, that was it. He played the one song, right? Uh, on drums. Right, right. on drums. That yeah. was that, that might night. have been the one where I think I was thinking of the way lyrically he started off, he was a little, and I thought like, all right, you know, again, to what you say, he's on the drums, right? you know, he's playing, you know, he might, look, these guys, even at, with their level of, of what they've achieved might be nervous you, you know what i mean of course it's like, he just had you know, surgery it's his yeah. first public performance playing drums in years i'm sure there's a little bit of yeah. nerves there and look if i'm being honest you could hear in the room the power in the drums was not the same peter compared to brent fitz compared to matt Starr. you know when, when he came up on stage peter to play drums I could hear that the, just the power was not there. God bless the guy. He's what, 77 years old? <laughs> you know, it's not a criticism, but you could just tell, you know, that there is a difference at this point that they're getting up there in age. Again, did not matter to me, but I just want to acknowledge that you, you could tell there's a little bit of a difference. I did not care. I don't know how much I, more I could stress that. I did not care. Yeah. I was yeah. freaking having the time of my life. Now, after Peter performed, and it was about an hour or so into the set, I did step out of the room. I went to the back. I was hot. I was tired. I was getting a little cranky. Um, so I watched the last like 20 minutes from literally right outside the room, but the doors were open. I could see, I could hear. I just needed fresh air. Um, so that's, was that it, was, it, was, it, was it, do you feel like that it was the hotel didn't have proper temperature in the room? Nope. Nope. I felt that it was me on three hours sleep standing in a room. Um, with five, six, 700 people, whatever it was in there. And um, just needed some oxygen. <laughs> Need oxygen. Oxygen. So, um, so I watched the last 20 minutes or so from, from outside the room. At first I thought I was just gonna run to the bathroom, go back in and I was like, nah, nah, let me just sit here. It feels, the fresh air is feeling good right now. So um, mm. that was the end of the first evening. Was there anything else from those shows I, again you aren't there so you're watching online i'm giving my in-person comments was there anything from those shows that i haven't mentioned that you picked up on watching the videos from home not not really i mean you, i mean you basically said i mean you didn't had the band sound how did they you know one thing i did notice and um i think my brother brought it up is that the tempos that stuff that ace is doing maybe even slower now i, I um, noticed it during parasite in fact i turned i was standing with billy watching yeah. um watching ace and i i, 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 billy I think is. Yeah. Who billy is yeah. billy is the guitarist and vocalist from the kiss cover band that you are in <laughs> yes. okay. All right. so um 
I think I was talking to him at that time. I turned to him when they were doing Parasite. I said, oh, I didn't realize this song was a ballad. Because yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's how slow really? it felt. Yeah, that's how slow it felt to me. Um, wow. And, you know, that's a great riff. And, and it just it lacked some of the energy. But um, I think that's because Ace just needs to slow it down so he could sing and, and not lose his breath. That's I'm speculating. I don't know that. But or it could be or could it be hands, you know, playing these riffs and doing some maybe. stuff, you know, could maybe that also. could be definitely could be who knows but um yeah yeah so i did notice sometimes the tempos are a little slow but um whatever i saw ace and peter perform together 10 out of 10 for me the rest didn't matter yeah not, not at all so um was that the feeling in the room or after afterwards like did people feel the same way or did yeah everybody i spoke to was seemed to be excited you know seeing ace and peter play i did not hear any negatives not one i'm trying to remember now i don't think i heard a single negative comment from a person there about that mm -hmm. show um i think people felt they got what they paid for they saw ace and peter play together and this is only night number one we've got two more nights we're already in gravy territory because we got ace and mm -hmm. peter on night number one right anything at that point to me and, and number of people i spoke to would just be a bonus yeah, yeah. in fact I, I one guy i was talking to said if i left tonight i would feel like i accomplished what i came for so that was that was the consensus of the people I spoke to. I did not hear anybody. I'm sure there's somebody there that was not happy. Well, nobody I that. right. Yeah. Nobody I spoke to. Everybody was it's nobody. Ecstatic. Nobody. Right. N O B O D Y. Bye. Nobody. Yeah. Bop. Nobody. Bop. Bop. Yeah. Bop. <laughs> yeah. uh, so yeah, so that was Friday. That point, Ace is done. Hung out, spoke with some people. And I went upstairs and got a nice night's sleep. Oh, man, that was mm. glorious. That was a glorious night's sleep I had. Now, was that glorious Esteban or glorious Gainer? Mm, that, it was Gainer, I think. I think it was Gainer. <laughs> or maybe a mix. Maybe it was a cocktail of both. Maybe. <laughs> All right, maybe it was a cocktail of both. A blend. Yes, but um, I knew I wanted to be up the next day. I think it was 12 o'clock. They were doing the All-Star Jam. Um, which again would be different people kind of jumping up on stage and doing cover songs. And this was not in the main room where they did the shows at night. This was in the room where they had all of the dealers set up. Okay. And um, the thing I wanted to see more than anything was, and you know this, I'm a big Kicks fan and Brian Forsythe, the guitar player from Kicks, was there. And I knew he was going to be doing a jam on the first song. So I was like, all right, I want to be there for the start. I want to see that. And I wanted to be there at the end because the guys from Minefield were going to be performing together as a band for the first time. So I was like, all right, you guys roped me in for the whole thing. So I want to see the first song and the last song. But it was actually a fun time. It was good, um, you know, with the the chat. And I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to remember to tell you who everybody was on the stage. But the one that they did with uh, Brian Forsythe was uh, Chip Away to Stone from Aerosmith. And it sounded great. I mean, the, the whole thing, all the songs that those bands covered sounded great it was a little painful at times it took five ten minutes sometimes to change from one band to the next getting up on stage and i was like why can't they just hand the instruments off like here take this bass take this guitar and start right up you know um so there was times i felt like i was standing around waiting but when they performed like oh, that's a kick-ass version of that song oh that's a kick-ass version of that song it was a lot of fun i just wish it kind of flew a little easier just my opinion you know but well, I could tell you as a musician, you know, your instrument is very personal and, and people like it set up a certain way, certain gauge of strings. And remember, when this stuff goes live on YouTube, it's forever. So sure. if somebody's pulling heavier strings and they're going to do a solo and they're not going to be un you know, uncomfortable. We know that there's a story, I think, when when we went on the Kiss Cruise and Tommy Thayer, Bruce Kulick were backstage, per se, and Bruce was like, can I use that other acoustic? I think the one Tommy, you know, maybe because it had like easier action or yep. easier for invention. And Tommy's like, sure, use that one. And Bruce kind of thanked them for using, you know, the other guitar. So, yep. you know, again, these guys know when they're going on stage, like it's going to be ripped to stretch or it's going to be criticized. Sure. Everyone, they want to be comfortable. And it probably all comes down to it being very personalized and, you know, the experience for them. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. And look, the performances were all, uh, there's not a single performance that day that I can't say in the afternoon, that All-Star Jam, that wasn't not just good, but great. I, I really thought every performance was great. There was How just times, songs? 
uh 10 songs 11 songs something like that yeah you know, i, I want to say it was like eight or nine covers and then minefield came up on stage um and they did uh, alone together from their album which if, if anybody who's watching this doesn't know who minefield is it's todd kearns right from slash and bruce's band it's jeremy asbrock from ace's band and gene's band matt Starr again from ace's band and brandon fields uh guitarist uh, who actually did a lot over the weekend here and it's a great album. Check it out. And the song Alone Together, great song. It went over well with everybody who was watching who didn't know it seemed to be enjoying it. And um, I just enjoyed seeing the four of them perform that song together. I think Todd's a great vocalist, a great front man. I love his personality, which we'll talk about some more, you know, with the Bruce show. But um, it was just a, a fun thing. And then um, I think they did uh, Paradise City after. Oh, no, they did All American Man first after that, which is also on their album, which they did a great version. And then I think they finished with uh, Paradise City, which, which and I think John Karabi came on. No, um, Chips Enough came on stage for that also. So it's just, you know, it's one, again, it's one of those kind of things. It was just like people coming on and off the stage, which was fun, you know? So mm -hmm. it was a nice little thing to kind of entertain us in the afternoon. Nice. Cool. We all knew, though, what everybody was waiting for on Saturday. Right? In fact, it was the talk for days, weeks, months leading up to this. And that was that Vinnie Vincent was going to be making his first public performance. Everybody thought it was going to be with a band in 30 plus years. Mm, mm, so mm. originally he was going to be the highlight, uh, not the highlight, the headliner that evening. Right. right. I forget who was a pretty boy, Floyd, Vixen, and then Vinnie Vincent. Okay. And somewhere late afternoon, they said Vinnie was going to go on first that night which was fine with me. I had no objection to that. And they said, instead of it starting at seven, it would probably start 7.30 or eight. Not a problem. So me and some of the guys I'm with, we'd line up at like quarter to seven, right? At this point, there's probably a good hundred people online to get in already. So we said, hey, quarter to seven, let, let's go, you know, get online. Well, this way it's going to start 7.30-ish. We'll, we'll get in. About 8 15, 8 20, we're still all standing in the hallway. Now, at this point, there's oh, hundreds. What time, uh, what time is he supposed to start at this point? They had said between 7 30 and 8. Okay. So it's 8 20. We were online from quarter to seven, and there's nothing. We're just standing in a hallway, and there's you know no announcements or anything, and people are getting a little antsy, you know? I was going to say, I'm not even there, and I'm getting cranky right well, now. You so, know the way I am. so uh, who was I standing there with? Uh, you know, it all becomes a blur to me who I was with each thing. Um, I might've been with Brian, right? And I said to him, if Vin was here right now, he'd be a cranky fuck. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. He'd yeah. be like, I don't want to be standing here. Or maybe I was with Billy. I don't know. I was with one of those yeah. guys. Whoever was yeah. knew you. And I was yeah. like, oh, Vin would not be happy right now. <laughs> standing yeah. in this hallway waiting all of this time. Um, yeah. Finally... 20 after eight, 25 after eight, they say they're going to let us in. Now, you and I have been to Vinny events in the past, and we know when they let us in, what usually happens. He's already on stage yes. playing, right? Right. That's what was happening here. Now, yeah, I got it. Of that. Right. I got it. I understood. But there were people in the hallway, I think, that was like, what the hell? I'm out here for an hour and a half, and I'm missing it? <laughs> you know, it was, a, it was an awkward thing for people who didn't know for somebody like me that knew. I was like, all right, yep, this is what Vinny loves. Vinny loves that you walk in the room and there he is, this grand entrance, right? Like, like and then, you know, the people as they're walking in, they're like, you could see their mouths like, oh my God, right? Like, like people were really like awed by it. So the people outside were maybe worried that they were going to miss something. But as people came in, I can tell you the look on everybody's face was like, holy crap and my first thought was i'll never have to answer a question again about can he play or not thank you god <laughs> because i was sick and tired of having to answer that question and i'll divert us for a moment funny story wednesday night i had a dream that when his show came up on saturday he only played rhythm guitar like he did in miami a few years ago and the yeah. next day, so many people were coming up to me. I came to Nashville, Mike, because you said he could play. This is the dream I had. And I got ripped off, and it's your fault. You've been saying for years he could play. So as I walked in the room, and he's up there on top of the tank, and he's doing his shred stuff, I'm like, ah, thank you. Everybody could see, and I will never be asked this question again in my life. Could Vinny play yeah. or not? So it was kind of funny that that was the first thought that entered my mind 
as I walked in that room. But you said you saw the video. So what was your thoughts seeing that with him on top of the tank as people enter in the room? I mean, you know, again, I, I think it's a it's a definitely a cool visual, but mm -hmm. I'll go to the next part when I when we get to the next part about that whole thing being on top of the tank. I think yep. that's a cool way to start the show, you know, with him being on top of the tank. And yep. yeah, I, I mean, listen, we remember being in SIR studio. Was it SIR? Was that yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. SIR Nashville. And we would and we were waiting to get in. It was the same kind of thing, you know, yep. and he's doing his thing and you know, ripping in any place for like 15 or 20 minutes, you know, it's just, it's like, it, it's almost like it feels like it's an endless, you know, thing. Yes, exactly. So yeah. I don't really know if it needs to be that long, quite honest, you know, me personally, I'd rather hear more songs than hear, you know, 15 or 20 minutes of, of soloing. But that's, yep. <clears throat> so I don't know. And that's my question to you. You and I have had voice similar opinions in the past. These people are seeing it for the first time. So they may have a different perspective on it. You know, were people at the end, I mean, we'll fast forward a little bit, was I all right, that was too much of him just soloing and just shredding, quote unquote, or what was the overall feel on that? It, it was a mix there. I think more people, so I'll tell you this, rather than going to the end for a moment, yeah. in the room, the vibe at that moment, in my opinion, was very electric. Right. It was, you know, people are walking in, he's on top of the tank, he's doing his shred for 10, 15 minutes. And I tend to agree with you. I'd rather hear songs. Um, I love his songwriting. That's what I'm a fan of more than the shred stuff. And I've told that to him, you know, I think his songwriting is phenomenal. The shred gets boring after five minutes yeah. to me, yeah. but I think yeah. he needed to do that being that this is the first public appearance. So I have to take what I preferred out of the equation because 700 800 people whatever it is in that room haven't been to these parties where you and i have so i think he had to do that and i think it went over that first 10 15 minutes enormously well because he would stop and people would like, <sighs> like going crazy and at the end of the shred when when you could tell it was over the whole place started chanting Vinny, Vin, and it wasn't like it was being egged on by somebody it was just a genuine he did a shred for 10 15 minutes and that room just became electric with people chanting his name over the fact that they were like excited to have seen this. At what point did they say you weren't allowed the video and do that? Because I want to address that whole thing. Yeah. So I heard as we were waiting outside, like five minutes beforehand, somebody said, there's a rumor that we're not going to be allowed to video. That was the extent of my knowledge on it, right? There was no announcement, nothing that I heard. Now, if there was an announcement and I missed it, that's on me. There was nothing I heard. I walk into the room and he's up there. And as far as I'm concerned, just like everything else this weekend, we're allowed to, to video. And I do, I start videoing the, the start of it. And I think my video is seven, excuse me, seven seconds long. And all of a sudden there's a flashlight in my face. And I'm like, what the hell? At first I was confused. And then I realized no, that's a security guard and he's telling me to stop video. <laughs> People, as far as I know, nobody knew ahead of time. And look, I'm going to give a little bit of a criticism on that. You know, if, if Vinny or whoever it is that decided they didn't want the video, that's their prerogative. You kind of have to tell people ahead of time. You know, there yeah, was but also I don't know officially in, in the scheme of, of life. Yep. If people have the right to do this stuff, you know, you're, you're paying for you're paying mm -hmm. for an event. I don't know, like legally, know. you know, know, like what are the, what's the legal whatever it is. I mean, my thing, and listen, we did the Vinny stuff and, yep. and it was an intimate thing. And I get, you know, when you're walking around talking, you don't want conversations, you know, something like that, stuff like that. I could totally understand where you don't want stuff being recorded. But yep. for me, as far as I know, you know, I don't know of any other artist who, who does this and you're paying. I can't name them, but I do know there's some artists that literally make you lock your phone in a case. If you go to see them or whatever, I don't know which artists because I've never seen them. But yeah. to your point, 
the far and few between. They're the exception. Yeah. It's not the norm. Yeah. 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 And it's, it certainly wasn't the norm on this weekend. Vinny was the only and, one that did not allow to, didn't want video. In. And, and you've said in the past that, you know, if he did allow it, then it would keep a lot of people quiet about, can he do this? Can he do that? Yeah. Is you know what I mean? You've said it even in the past. Like I, yeah. I wish that he would allow that because to your point, I asked him at one of his yeah. parties, if I could do yeah. just a 10 second video. And he said, no, yeah. you know, and I respect yeah. that. And you know, at his parties, I could understand that. It's impossible, as you can tell, because this video is on YouTube now, it's impossible to try to police 800 people last second that you're not allowed to video. For some yeah. people are going to be like, screw you, I paid, I'm going to do what I want. Other people are not going to know and they're going to try whatever it is. And, and again, I can't see how this was an afterthought. If Vinny has a history of this, it yeah. should have been well communicated on doors or handouts or something right before, because fans are anticipating a certain experience. Yeah. And you should know going in that, listen, I'm not going to be able to do that because yeah. at least then, well, you might be disappointed, but at least, you know, going in and not at that moment, be furious or whatever. And, and so <clears throat> I just don't think that was a good way to go about this. And, and that seems to be the consensus of the people there. They seem to say that, Hey, if I wasn't allowed, I needed to be, I needed to be known beforehand. I mean, from what I heard, I didn't see it. Some people were escorted out by security um, for not following the rules or whatever. There's a video online of somebody's phone being smacked out of their hands by security. And just, it's, and that's it. Just, just that bad look. It's a bad yeah. look, you know, Yeah, that was and, all avoidable. And again, I just wondered, uh, do, does security end or because like if somebody's causing a fight, excuse me, <laughs> or doing something, you know, um, or, um, trashing the place, I can understand where security is involved, but if you got your phone and going like this, do they really have the legal right to do that? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, to me, if the promoter yeah. says no video, let's just say, I would think that's within their right. And whether it is or isn't, again, from my point of view, I'm always going to respect that. Right. So I, I'm not going to get into, well, you don't have a right to tell me, whatever. I'm there as a guest. I'm going to listen if that's what they want. They just, they needed to communicate it ahead of time. That's, I remember when I saw Ace do his 78 solo album in Jersey a couple of years ago, there were signs on the door, no videos, no cameras, you know, and you knew before you walked in. This was, again, unless I missed it, but if I missed it, so did hundreds of others. I don't think people knew it all. It just, to me, it's unfortunate because look what's happening right now. We were talking about the performance and what happened. We shifted right into the whole video and thing, and it becomes a negative that shouldn't even be there in my mind. And the bottom line is, I've seen some of the videos. It's out there. It's not like it's you don't there. see it or hear it, you know. And um, and then when you visually see it, it looks worse to me because you got one guy, and I think he had like twenty thousand as a little looks like, like views on mm -hmm. his video. He's putting the camera up. He's right. putting it down. He's put, it just again like it just there's this this tension there that just like you know, that again, it's a bad look. Good look. It's yeah, a yeah. bad look when you're doing your first public thing in 25, 30 years, you know, and um, to me, that's a shame because yeah. like I said, during that shred, when the shred ended, that room, in my opinion, was electric and people were excited, chanting his name again, not because somebody was on stage saying, you know, hey, chant Vinny's name. It was just because that was the fans reaction. But we're not talking about that. Instead, we're talking about people having their phone smacked out of their hands. And that's, you yeah. That's unfortunate to me. That's unnecessary. You know, we should be talking about, hey, I saw him shred for 15 minutes. That was exciting. And, you know, and then you go into the performance thing, which, you know, people had mixed feelings about that as well. You know, so. Um, and the lucky things didn't escalate because quite yes. honestly, maybe not my personality. If somebody smacks something out of my hand, I might get in somebody's face and you might right. start getting into a fight. Yeah. Now, what happens in a room of five, six, whatever it was, you know, and all of a sudden it starts to become you're creating this thing that quite honestly it's not, you know, it's not going to be a good no. scene at all. Agreed. So, Agreed. It's, I don't know. I just keep saying it was, it's unfortunate. Yeah. It's unfortunate that that's what happened. But, um, you know, so it's fun. It's the, after the shred, he then starts playing to tracks, you know, so people thought he was going to have a full band. And as he's shredding, I'm was, looking. Was there, go ahead. was it, did he say he was going to play with a full band going in? Did he say, I'm going to have a band? Um, I don't know. 
I don't remember the exact wording. I, it was certainly implied there was going to be a full band. Um, I think that's the way everybody took it, that there was going to be a full band. Again, yeah. I've been to some of these events and I know in the past he's paid to tracks. So in my mind, that was certainly in the realm of possibility, but I'm one of 50 people that have been to those parties. Most of those other people in those room, that room has not been. I, when I walked in and I saw him up on the top of the tank and he shred in, I was like, it was such a friggin', it's an incredible visual to me. He was awesome. It was really, really. I mean, whoever's idea that was a plus, plus, plus. I mean, it was just an incredible visual walking into the room and seeing him on top of that tank. And as I'm watching for five minutes, it dawns on me. He's like, where's the drum set? And that was, but I could see a drum set behind the Vinny tank. It was the drum set. Vinny was the drum <laughs> set. <laughs> I could see a drum set behind the tank. So I'm like, well, yeah. maybe when he's done with the shred, they're going to, but I'm like, that looks like it's going to be difficult to take a drum set and now lift it up. And I'm like, yeah, what the hell do I know? I don't run these kind of things, but it mm-hmm. dawned on me like five minutes in. And then the shred ends, the, people are going crazy chanting his name. And then the track comes on for I Love It Loud. And I'm like, all right, I guess he's going to play to a track. So I'm just going to pause here for a moment and say last May, when I went to see his party in Nashville, private event, he played an hour and a half to tracks. And while I much prefer him play with a live band, and I've said this to him, um, when he played to the tracks last year, it was tight, well rehearsed. It was 15, 16 songs, complete songs, beginning to end, stuff like, um, what is it? Uh, Shoot You Full of Love. Boy's gonna rock on the eighth day. Um, I just wanna, and he played them beginning to end. He did the solos. He had a little acoustic part in the middle of the show where you know he did some of his slower songs. Yeah, I would have preferred it to be a full band, but he did a, for all intents and purposes, a full concert. So in my mind, as the track started, I'm like, well, that's what's gonna happen again. And while it's a different type of experience. I think people will feel satisfied if he does 15, 16 songs and he does a lot of Kiss stuff, maybe some of his own stuff. I think people will really feel satisfied. Um, unfortunately, that's not what happened. <laughs> so I, I was a little so disappointed. What happens, Mr. Brun? Yeah, so he, he starts doing I Love It Loud. And again, the vibe in the room is still excited. People are excited. He starts doing that and... Off to the sides, there's two microphones and the promoters that ran this were pretty much up on the sides, you know, singing like the, hey, 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 Potts. And uh, it was cool for them. They had their moment, you know, hey, like, look, we pulled this off in public. Vinny's playing um, down on the main part of the stage. Todd Kearns was down there. Uh, the guys, all three of them from Sisters Doll was down there um, all singing. And it was a, a party and, and people were having, I'm going to say on the stage, a lot of fun. My personal opinion, I don't like that. I, I don't like fans on a stage. And I said that in 2017 when Gene brought people up on stage. I remember when you and I were in Cleveland and um, he was like, oh, the fans come up here. Guys, this song, girls, this song. I'm like, get the fans off the stage. No, I've never been a fan of fans on a stage. <laughs> you know, so not that Todd Kearns and Sisters Doll are fans, you know, that there are other artists there. But I just... I want to see the artist. I don't. So, so I wasn't loving it, but I could tell you everybody on the stage was having the time of their life. Okay. And all good for them. And I, and I bring up that it was sisters doll and Todd Kearns because, you know, it's not like everybody in that room was like, what the hell is going on? You know, the people that they were having fun, Mm -hmm. the people on the stage, you know, I think from people watching it at home and I'm sure at least some of the people in the room were like, huh, where's the band? What's yeah. going on? You know, where's the drama? Where's the bass player? So, was, so let me just say, wait. so the only track that wasn't real was him playing the guitar. Is that what you're saying? It, no, there was a guy. I don't know what his name is, even though somebody told me it and I forgive me. I forget it. There was a guy, I'm going to say, running around on stage playing bass. Um, very good. Very, you know, he was only, he almost became like the MC for the concert, you know? Um, and he was kind of running back and forth during the songs of the tracks and he's playing bass. And, um, he certainly, I'll say had like the Gene Simmons vibe type thing to him. And, um, you know, I wish Vinny would have had a drummer with that kind of, uh, enthusiasm and charisma to me, I would have enjoyed that, but, um, but he did have a bass player. He was playing all the guitars and then the drums were on track and vocals were on track. Okay, so how many songs they do? Because I, I mean, I did hear, and again, immediately, I, I mean, I talk about electronic drums with the Who, 
Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I spot it from, you know, note one and I'm just yeah. like, and I know, you know, Vinny has been very open about like he, he thinks drum machines are better than drummers, which I totally disagree. Right. Um, but you know, uh, so it doesn't surprise me at all that he would do that. Yeah. Um, but so what else did they do? So they did. I love it loud. Then all of the, the people who were on the stage left the stage um, except for the bass player. And then they announced that Bruce Kulik is going to come out and, and play with him. And Bruce walks out. He was on. Oh, he just says, I love it loud. That's it. That's it. At that point. Yeah. Right. So Bruce comes out. And again, I was on like the left hand side of stage. Vinny's right. My left. Um, and that's where Bruce comes out from. And Bruce seems very excited to be out there. He's wearing a bandana that has a bunch of onks on it. And he's trying to get Vinny's attention, like say, hey, look at my bandana, this is for you. And you can see like Bruce is like excited to kind of like be honoring Vinny that way. And I'm not sure Vinny's still, you know, the whole time basically he's up on the tank and I'm not sure if Vinny even caught that that's what Bruce was trying to tell him or not. Um, but you could clearly see that like Bruce is excited and he wants to acknowledge to Vinny, hey, I'm wearing this for you. Um, and then I forget, I think, I guess it was the bass player that, that said they were going to do War Machine because Vinny didn't even have a mic up there. So um, at that point, they start doing War Machine, Vinny and Bruce. And again, the track for the drums and the bass player. And you can see Bruce is trying to figure out and find his way at the start of the song. Um, like, like, how do I get in step with this drum track? And he's making these faces like, mm, 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 like, like, like he's uncomfortable for a few seconds um by the time the first verse kicked in he was he was where he needed to be and and then the song went off i'll say perfectly and no surprise with bruce and um it was cool it was interesting you know and then one of the things i want to say because Vinny gets a lot of flack for a lot of things but in the past whether it was when he was in miami in the past when he's at these conventions and he always does rhythm he always says you know, he wants to give whoever else is on the stage the opportunity to shine and there it is, it's War Machine, and he's letting Bruce do all the solos. And I picked up on that instantly, and I'm like, you know what? People say what you want about Vinny, but it's again, it's like, hey, Vin, I'm having Bruce up, I'm gonna let Bruce do his thing. And I, and I give Vinny a lot of credit for that. You know, even though I think a lot of people are like, Vin, we wanna hear you do the solos, not Bruce, you know? Um, yeah. And but myself they, included. They solo on that song, right? Yeah, him on that, yeah. On that. yeah. yes, but, but at the performance that day, he let Bruce, take the lead and i think that disappointed some well, people in the room it you know it almost makes more sense you have bruce on this on the stage you do something from a revenge era have yep. bruce do the solo on that you're doing yep. war machine Vinny should do the solo on agreed that. so agreed i mean i get what you're saying but again song choice there whatever in hindsight for me if i was looking back at it and i don't know what comes next Although I think I do, but God. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I, but I think probably one of the reasons maybe Bruce didn't want to do a revenge track is because when we get to Bruce's show, I'll let you know that he did the entire revenge album front to back. Okay. So maybe he didn't want to do a repeat on that night. I, I don't know. I'm speculating. Obviously, I wasn't in these conversations, but, um, yeah. you know, I wish they would have kind of traded off doing solos with each other. That's what I would have been looking forward to. Again, based on Vinny's past experience, I want to say Vinny you know, feels, hey, hey, I'm going to give Bruce the respect and all of that. But uh, us in the fan and the crowd, we want to see them trade and trade and Lex. Not, not only that, let's, what's the odds that they even had a conversation, rehearsed, or did anything? Probably Vinny. Probably himself, slim. And, and, mm -hmm. and to do that on the spot, yeah, I guess you can do it. Yeah. That also could lead to something being even more weird or whatever. So it probably Possibly. has more to do with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. You know? Yeah. So, but the song goes off and it goes off very well. And, you know, again, I'm still, you know, it's, it's different. I think some people would even say it's a little weird, but I'm like, yeah, this is still, I keep thinking in my mind, this is unique. You know, this is something I'm never going to see again. And then they say they're going to bring Ace out, which we knew the three of them were going to perform together. And at that point you got Vinny on top of the tank and Bruce and Ace down on the main part of stage. And I've seen a lot of people comment on this online and you kind of alluded to it before. I wish all three of them were like on the main stage and Vinny, all three of them were up on the tank. It was not easy to get up and down from that. And I'll tell you, know, when Vinny's show was over, they literally had to have two people help him down off the tank. You know, yeah, so. I, again, what's the word you said? Not a good visual or not a good, yeah. you know, we're talking about. Yeah, it mean, just, it's no not one, a good look. 
I got no good luck. There's no way Vinny Vincent should be above Ace Freely, in my no. opinion, because it no. just looks like, to quote one of the King of uh, Kiss songs, he's like King of the Mountain here, right. and here is his little two little disciples underneath him. You know, yep. I mean, yep. listen, not knowing what what it was like, you know, like I said, trying to get Vinny off the the, the damn tank. You know what I mean? Yep. I could understand it a little bit more, mm -hmm. but again, you know, when you're planning these things, you know, even for Ace, I mean, he had to think. I would think like, you know. Oh my God, this guy's on top of this tank. I'm down here. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking. I'm fucking Ace Freely. Yeah, he's Vinny Vincent, but I'm always gonna be Ace Freely. Mm -hmm. I'm always the original member of Kiss. I don't know. To me, when I saw that, I was like, "Wow, okay, that's you know." Yeah, I think it threw a number of people for a loop when they saw the pictures. Again, I don't get overly too worked up with that kind of stuff because whatever it is, what it is, and um, you know, when the three of them were on stage, Vinny again deferred to Ace and to Bruce to do the leads. Um, I totally get that for other people. The visual was like, oh, that's a little insulting to, to Ace, who's an original member, you know, and, and maybe to Bruce as well. But um, whatever. I don't, I don't get hung up on that stuff personally. But I, I think other people did, you know. Yeah. To me, it was more interesting. So when Ace joins, I think the first song they were going to do was Deuce. If I got my sequence right, I think it was Deuce and then Cold Gin, not the other way around, but it doesn't matter. But let's just say Deuce is the first song. And they start the track, the drum track, and it's the drum track for Cold Gin. Mm. So it's the drum track for Cold Gin, and Ace is playing Deuce. So they stop it, you know? And then what happens is they change the track to Deuce. Ace doesn't realize they're going to change the track. He starts playing Cold Gin. <laughs> so they have to stop that. And then Ace had the quote of the weekend. Just give me a freaking drummer and I could play anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh boy. Yeah. Oh man. But um let's try that one more time. I can play anything. I just see a, a drummer. <laughs> they all eventually got on the same page and, and they did deuce together the three of them. And and Ace actually sang a lot of the song himself, which surprised me. Um, so it went from being an awkward thing to be in oh, this is kind of interesting seeing the three of them now up on stage playing guitar ace singing and uh they're all doing deuce together and Vinny, a lot of times would be like pointing to ace and pointing to bruce um i could only say it was both weird and exciting and interesting all together at once if that makes sense what i'm saying but um yeah. you know you, you've only probably seen little video clips what were your thoughts yeah, I mean, it's, it, and some of the clips I saw, I think I was looking at somebody's back or their leg, you right. know what I mean? Because the yep. camera's going up and down. So it's very, very inconsistent, you know what yep. I mean? So mm -hmm. to really give an opinion on that, it wouldn't be fair as if I watched the whole thing and all sure. the visuals, you know? Um, I, I don't know. I guess I felt very mixed about it, you know? But I wasn't in the room. I know mm -hmm. what it's like when you're in the room and, and having that energy of something. And, yep. and to what you say, and there is a lot of validity behind something that may never happen again and you're seeing something that's historic or whatever and these are guys, three guys you know three you know except for tommy you know i mean mm -hmm. and mark st john is not with us right i'm not right. missing anybody members original not i'm sorry not original members of kiss they were members of kiss at one time who toured and whatnot yeah. um so certainly could could understand there being an excitement level of that you know um song choices again eh, you know what i mean i guess i could Right. I had my in my mind, what did, what do these songs have to do with Vinny? But at the same time, is it are they gonna have Ace singing uh, playing guitar to Young and Wasted? That's never gonna happen. Yeah, know? right. So it's almost like Vinny has to defer to the classic stuff by right. default. Yeah, you know, and and he did do that stuff with Kiss. You yeah. know, so yeah. it only makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, with Ace gonna do Rock Soldiers and have Vinny play? I mean, it's right, like, it's, it's, it's never gonna, gonna happen. happen. You know, never so, gonna happen. You know, I mean, it's, I could see, I could see if it was Ace and and Bruce and they said let's do rock soldier bruce would probably be like okay because i can see bruce is like no ego bruce will do like totally. you know he's, he just wants to give the fan but when you have very strong personalities like an ace and a Vinny, you know you gotta come to some sort of common ground yep. and the common ground is going to be deuce cold gin of course whatever you know, the classics original, you know yeah the classic so. stuff yep yeah. yep you know at the end of cold gin um ace's guitar had crapped out or whatever i don't know there's just no sound coming he was like deferring over to Bruce to do the solos. And um, 
you know, Ace was really, I'll say, complimentary on the stage. I don't remember if he said words or if he like pointed to Bruce in a certain way, but you know, Ace definitely was giving Bruce his uh, due recognition. And um, at the end, I know Vinny kind of walked over. Now he's still on top of the tank and he's trying to like acknowledge Ace and shake his hand or fist bump him. And it was like an awkward thing because again, it's just like, he's up here, Ace is down here. It just came across like a little awkward for the, even the both of them at that moment, like trying to like thank each other or whatever. Um, you know, saying all of this, people kept asking me that night and the next day, hey, Mike, what'd you think of this? What'd you think of that? You know, and, and I'll be honest, the people there were very mixed. There were people I spoke to, they're like, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. And other people were like, oh my God, I felt like I was just on a bad acid trip. What the hell just happened? You know, it was, it was really incredible what a different perspective people in the room had. Mm-hmm. Word I kept using, that was memorable. Yeah. There is no how 25 years from now, I am not going to remember that evening. I might not remember seeing The Who on Thursday night. I might not remember seeing Ace Freely on Friday night. I might not remember seeing Bruce Kulik on Sunday night, even though they were all great performances. You could be damn strong when I remember seeing this thing on Saturday night. Um, and some people loved it. Some people hated it. My only comment that I said, and that's why I mentioned before about the party I went to last year, I wish he would have done 15, 16 songs. I wish he would have done Young and Wasted, Not for the Innocent, On the Eighth Day, even if it wasn't going to be with a full band, which is my preference, I would have enjoyed it more if it was a full 14, 15 song set list. So let me just pause you there because yeah. I was going to say something. Just because you remember something doesn't mean it's going to, it's a good, it's a good event or a good occasion or good at anything. But I'm just That's fair. Thinking. That's fair. And, and honestly, I'm still confused on how I feel about it. Although I just keep going. It's, it's memorable. It, it's, it's wild. It's, it's crazy. Those are some of the words that other people are saying to me also. It really is. It's unique. You know? so. But what, how many so- songs total? That, that was it. So, so Vinny did, I love it loud, war machine, deuce and cold gin, four songs. So for me, outside of looking in, I would have been disappointed in that because if this was a Vinny Vincent performance, was it booked as a Vinny Vincent yes. performance? Yes, it was. And he's going up and do four songs. Yeah. Bruce is doing a full set of songs. Yeah. Aces, you said did 15 songs. Yeah. You know, so and Vinny, Vinny's four. thing was 45 minutes only. Right. So you're getting, again, so you're getting four songs. Um, let me think. He didn't write Deuce. He yeah. didn't write Cold Gin. He didn't write uh, Help Me With the I Love It War Loud. Machine. He was co writer. Right. He didn't write War Machine. He didn't write War. So, one out of four songs he helped yeah. write. To me, like, I want to hear something from the Vinnie Vincent Invasion era. Please give me something. Yeah. And, yeah. like, to your point, what you said before, you know, man, that event sounded great when you mm-hmm. now, now I'm not expecting 15 songs. You know, or, or, I did. Or whatever. I did because when I saw him, he shredded for ten minutes and then did the fifteen songs. And I honestly thought last year when I saw him, he focused largely on Vinnie Vincent Invasion songs and then did yeah. a couple of Kiss. I figured it would be the other way around, or maybe even just exclusively Kiss songs. I thought he might do most of the Lick It Up album, some of the songs on Creatures. Um, and again, I would have preferred it to be a full band. But if it was yeah. with the tracks and he did those songs beginning to end and we heard him do the solo and Young and Wasted and we heard him do the solo of All Hell's Breaking Loose, I would have been excited. And having seen something like that last year with, you know, Boys Gonna Rock, Shoot You Full of Love, Animal, Twisted, right? And, and doing those songs beginning to end with the solos, I was like, I, people might have been like, oh, I wish it was a full band, but they would have felt like they really got more value out of it. Well, you got to because if you're waiting online, you're waiting to get in, and then you go and you hear four songs. I don't care how many people are on the stage. To right. me, you know, I feel like I didn't get my money's worth there. And other people could say, like, well, that's a maybe even yourself. Well, when am I ever going to see these three guys up on the stage yep. together? But to me, it sounds like that whole thing was half baked between no drummer, you know, um, the song selection, you know, maybe some of the awkwardness of like him on top of this tank and whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Again. Yep. Yep. We don't, we don't, we don't always stick alike on certain things. No, no, no. And again, I wasn't there, but that's just my. And, and I have my mixed feelings on it. Like I said, um, you know, I'm disappointed that he didn't put his best foot forward. Yeah. You know, um, I think had he done something like he did last year when I saw that, um, again, people would have been disappointed that there wasn't a full band, but at least it was a full concert. You know, but and you he know, played songs but- beginning to end. 
but you're going to know why he's probably not going to do this. And I'm speculating. Mm -hmm. If you want to see that, I'm going to do another one of these events and you're going to come to my event, you know, yep. no, at an SIR. I'm not going to give this to you when it's a whole other, you know, preacher's fest or whatever. However, okay, you don't want to do that? Give me three. Give me right. three Vinnie Vincent Invasion songs. Right. Give me give me something, you know, that yep. we haven't heard that Agreed. the common Kiss fan hasn't spent to go see an intimate, you know, SIR thing about 50 people. Just give me something. That's yep. that's how I would have felt. Agreed. Know? Agreed. And I'm, and I'm talking as a fan who didn't go that one time. Right. Right. And and I will say when I went to the when you and I went to that event, mm -hmm. we had no complaints. I mean, we None. thoroughly enjoyed that, you know. So, and that one he only he only shredded for 30 minutes. He didn't do full and songs. I didn't see the thing that you saw. Right. right. So exactly. last May, again, this is the third time now I've seen him. The last May thing to me was the best because it was 15, 16 songs. Again, I wish there was a full band, but if he's not going to and he chooses to play with the tracks, and another guitarist do that also, as I've been finding out. Like I think uh Buckethead does something very similar when he plays solo shows. So if that that's his prerogative, I just wish that there were much more songs. I wish it was more of like a concert format, which is what he did last May when I saw him. But yeah, before we move off of this, last night I'm packing up my stuff, getting ready to leave, and a trivia question hits me. So I'm going to throw this trivia question at you, and then we'll move on to the, to the last day of, of Creatures Fest. Mm -hmm. In the last 25 or 30 years, there's only two people that have been up on stage performing live with Vinny, singing with a full band. Who are those two people? Singing with a full band? So Vinny's playing guitar. There's a drummer, a bassist, and a singer. In the last 25 years, there's only two people that can lay claim to being a singer with Vinny Vincent in that type of situation. A lead singer? Who, who, lead who singer. Vinny? Yes. Two people. I'll give you what's my match. Which 25 years ago is what year? Uh 1996, 7, 8, like in that time period, let's just say. That's what I thought. So once he went into, I'll say hiding, since that time, there's only two people that can lay claim to performing live music with a full band and Vinnie Vincent and being the including singer. a drummer? Including a drummer. <clears throat> yes. Now this this one totally stumps me. I don't I, don't I know. know. You ready for yeah, this? Did you, get, did you come up with this question? I came up it? with this question. Right. And yeah. the answer is going to flaw you. The first person is Todd Howarth. Right? Four by Faith. When Vinny went up on stage with them and Todd Howarth, it was a full band and Vinny okay. played guitar. That's right. That's right. That's the right. The second person, Vincent LaRussa. <laughs> Think about that, buddy. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Think so, about you know, that. I mean, it, it's, on it's only you, you was only 50 people in the room, but there yeah. was a drummer, a bassist, Vinny playing guitar and you singing <laughs> one of two people in the last 25 years. I knew you would. <laughs> I was like, I, at first I was going to just tell you the, the answer. I was like, no, I got to pull, I got to put this in the form of a Notice I didn't even think of myself. You know I know that. I mean? <laughs> yes, exactly. So to clarify, if people don't know, at the event that we went to, he did I Love It Loud and Lick It Up, and that's what yeah. I sang on with Vinny. And he played he played guitar, lead guitar, Vinny did. Very similar type of performance as I Love It Loud this past weekend, where he did extended solos in it, right? So um, only it wasn't a track. It was a drummer and a bass player. And mm -hmm. Vinny, yep, you jumped up and you did the vocals for I Love It Loud, and he did the vocals for Lick It Up. Unfortunately, there's no video. There's a few pictures of it, right? Yeah. So there's a few pictures, and there was only 50 people in the room, but it was a live performance. Vinny right. with a drummer, yeah. a bassist, and a singer. You and Todd Howarth. That is the only two people that I know of in 25 years. Oh, man. I don't even know what to say after that. But yeah. <laughs> Good question, I'll say. You know? I know, right? I think, <laughs> you I think, don't I'll, even... I think I'll... I'll sleep you, a little better than I know, knowing that one. You didn't even know the answer, and you were one of the two. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So anyway, let, let's move on to Sunday then, right? Yesterday. Yeah. So actually, Sunday was, for me, the day I was, I'm going to say, most excited about, if for no other reason, but because there was a lot of shows I wanted to see on that day. Um, I just finished talking about Saturday, and I saw the All-Star Jam in the afternoon and Vinny at night, and that was it. Vinny was 45 minutes. The All-Star Jam was an hour. So it was an hour and a half of performances. I enjoyed walking around the the um, 
the exhibit area, looking at the merch, talking to people. So I had a great time. But Sunday, there's there a, lot a lot of, of exhibitors. Uh, uh, yeah, there's probably 25, 30 dealers or whatever. You know, and I, I know a lot of the guys and, uh, you know, a lot of people were in there buying things, shopping. And a number of them said they did well this weekend or it sounded like they did well. So um, I saw Matt Starr in there. He had a table. So I was talking to him. Um, it was a good, it was a good vibe in there. It was like an old school expo type feeling to it. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed hanging out in there for some on Saturday, but Sunday again, for me, was much more about now wanting to see some of the shows and it started for me at three 30. I think you noticed, maybe you don't, I happen to love, love, love the debut trickster album. Love it. I think it's underrated. It's one of the maybe five best debut albums from that decade, right? I'm not going to say ever, but from that decade. Um, and two of the guys from Tricks that were going to be there doing an acoustic performance in the afternoon, um, Steve Brown and PJ Farley from Tricks. That neither of them are the original singer, right? The, the singer wasn't with them, but they both could sing and sing very well. So they covered all the vocals. And for me, it was just a lot of fun. And they did a great version. You know, Steve's done a version of A Million to One, the Kiss song. So they did that um, as well. And they invited some people up on stage to help with that. And for me, I was just totally looking forward to that. So I had a lot of fun at that. Um, I thought of you, um, what's that? What's the name of the song? Um, hop on the jack bag, make a new plan, Stan. Don't need oh, to be covered. Yeah, so they did a cover of that as well, um, so, which sounded great. Uh, so, so to me, that was a lot of fun. So I really enjoyed that show in the afternoon. And then in the evening, it was going to be Sisters Doll, Quiet Riot, and Bruce Kulik. So it was, you know, three bands. The Quiet Riot one, I was indifferent if I saw it great. If I didn't, you know, it wasn't a must-do for me. But certainly Sisters Doll and Bruce was high on my list. I'm making sure I did that. So um, you and I had seen Sister Doll last week, literally the week before. And I assumed they were going to do the same set, basically, that they did when we saw them in New York. And they did, I think, four or five, four of their own songs. They actually did two Kiss covers. And one of them excited me to no end and disappointed me at the same time. But um, they did a cover of um, King of Hearts, which I love that song. I wish Kiss would have played it live in, in the Lick It Up, um, not the Lick It Up, the Hot in the Shade, so I wish they did. Sisters Doll did an absolutely incredible version of it, which excited me. The only reason it disappointed me is they told me, well, Bruce still isn't going to do that song. I've told Bruce, I've told Brent Fitz that they should do that. Brent actually put it in his phone. Oh, I'm going to bring this up the next time we have a band rehearsal. We should add this one. And as soon as Sisters Doll started doing it, I was like, damn, not going to be this time. Maybe the cruise. But it was an absolutely killer, killer version of the song. I, I recorded it. I haven't posted it yet. I'm going to be posting it later today. But um, I, it sounded absolutely great. And I think the people there were like, wow, that, that, that's good. That's really good. Um, but obviously, the highlight was that Pete was going to perform with them again. You know, so I think same thing as in New York, half hour into the show, whatever. They say, hey, we're going to bring Peter out. And similar to New York, he started off by doing, uh, what was the first one? Don't You Let Me Down? And then did Words. I was surprised. That was it. He just did the two songs with them, not mm. the third. He didn't do You Mad at Me. So I thought of you instantly and saying, all right, Vin's going to be happy if he only saw one. He saw the one with the three songs and, and he got to yeah. dance star and You Mad at Me. But, um, yeah. you know, saying that Peter was in his glory. And, you know, I just, I want to just acknowledge one thing for a moment. I, a few people told me that from the night when he performed at Ace, Gigi was asking if I was there and if I was going to post videos of, of Peter's performance. I was like, really? really? Like they're asking for my friends there and, and um, they were looking for my videos on YouTube. As Peter's performing with Sisters Doll, somebody taps me on my shoulder. I was, just so happened to be, I was up against the railing. The only time all weekend, I was railing boy, by the way. <laughs> okay. Railing Brun. Railing Brun was the only time all, the whole weekend. And all of a sudden somebody's tapping me on the shoulder, came from, from my left side and I look and it's Gigi. Just wanted to wave and say hello and, and acknowledge me while her husband's performing on stage with Sisters Doll. And I was just like, oh, that's, that's really nice. I just want to take a moment and, and thank Gigi for that. And I thought that was really cool. I know some fans give her some flack or whatever. She's been nothing but super nice to me and my family for years and years. And I, just for her, while her husband's performing, for her to come see me and kind of walk over 
from the side of stage out to me, tap me on the shoulder, wave hello. I just thought that was really nice. And at first I was like, who, who's this? And I saw who it was. I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's really cool. So I just wanted to take that moment and acknowledge her. And Peter gave a great performance again with Sisters Doll. Yeah, it was everybody there was super excited to see it. And um, as, as was I. So to me, all good. So how many songs did they wind up doing total then, Sister Doll? And was the other cover rock, God gave rock and roll to you again? No, no, they did uh, Lick It Up. As you said. Yep, they did too. They didn't do God Gave Rock and Roll to you. Obviously, Bruce was going to do that in his set. So um, oh, okay. they, they did Lick It Up. And it was good because they actually did Lick It Up the way Kiss does it today, like with the whole uh, Won't Get Fooled Again breakdown in the middle. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're obviously they're big Kiss fans and they did, a, I think, a great job of Lick It Up also. Um, I don't think I recorded that one, but again, I'm going to post King of Hearts. I'm sure you'll, you'll check it out. I and mean, they, they just, they nailed the Kiss songs. Absolutely nailed them. Um, so they did the two Kiss songs. I think they did four songs of their own and then the two songs of Peter. So it was a little bit of a shorter set than what we saw in New York. Mm. But okay. I still, I love their songs. I think they're catchy and, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I saw the guys they after have a the show. Player. No, of course not. No, same same exact format. <laughs> same oh, exact. Yes, I, although the, it's the, the one other good say on them. Yes, you know, yes. You know, I'm always going to say that because it's just like I want to see a drummer. I want to see a bass player on the stage. Uh, I think yeah. that's very, very, very fair. Um, although the second guitar player or the lead guitar player, really, um, Austin, I think his name's Austin. Yeah, Austin did play bass while Peter Chris was was performing again. Like, so same yeah. same things last time. Yep. But when the show ended, I thought this was pretty cool. Um, Neil came up on stage to announce Quiet Riot, and he told everybody there that it was actually Peter and Gigi that requested the Sisters Doll to be there this, this past weekend, and that Peter and Gigi paid for them to fly from Australia, round trip, paid all their expenses. And I just, of course, they, they, they think that highly of the guys in the bands. And I was like, you know, that, that's pretty cool that Peter and Gigi would take the money out of their pocket to fly these guys over and try to give them some exposure. Peter could have just played with Ace and could have played with Bruce and nobody would have ever been saying, how come he didn't play with Sisters Doll? Where were they, right? Peter took that money out of his pocket and Gigi as well to bring those guys over. And again, I think that says a lot about Peter and his character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and we don't have to get into it. We've heard mixed things about this event and yep. what Peter was supposed to do or could have done, that, blah, blah, and all that stuff. And I did see some stuff also. I know we, you haven't really talked about meet and greets and stuff like that. We'll go there after all so, the performances, yeah. yep. Yeah, all right, okay. Because yep. I saw some stuff about that too, which I kind of scratched my head at. Interesting. So, all right. So, yeah, I, I didn't say anything about Peter Race, but um, we'll no, go not there. Peter, we'll, not Peter Race. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll go there after we – let's wrap up the performances. So, you know, at the yeah. Sisters Doll – was Quiet Riot, and um, I'll be the first to admit, I was, again, indifferent about seeing Quiet Riot. There's something about not having the original singer, or for that matter, really anybody except for Rudy Sazo, that to me was like, mm, do he's I really- the original member, as far who's, as I know. Who's technically right. So, um, but there was, they were good. They were loud, 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 loud. Oh my God, I was getting a pounding headache because they were so loud. I got to give and the guys. Plus, you were railing Brun, and you were. I was railing, railing Brun, and I was near a speaker. I got to give the band a lot of credit since their work ethic. They were flying. They they performed in Boston the night before. They were flying in the morning of. Their flight was canceled, and you know I've had bad experiences with flights on holiday weekends, right? Their second flight was canceled, and like Neil said, it would have been easy for them to say we can't make it. They actually found a third flight made it i think just like a couple of hours before they were supposed to perform and then went went through with their performance so i want to acknowledge that in their work ethic and you know what they were very good they were very tight they did good renditions of the song and rudy sazo is still freaking entertaining as all hell and a monster he might be as i he was in front of me so i'm watching him the whole time like he very well might be the most entertaining bass player i've ever watched in my life Besides myself, but I, I well, well, well yeah, that's a given, of course. <laughs> Besides yourself, I, I didn't think I needed to say that, but just still, yeah. all the he's playing the and bass I'm joking, on top. By of his the head. way, <laughs> but also. Those who don't yeah. know, he's playing Before the bass on his head. I think people know and at I, this point. Yeah, I think yeah. people know, but what, that I'm an a -hole? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, you're joking, but um, right. no, Vinny, uh, not Vinny, um. Rudy's playing the bass on his head. He's got his hands backwards. You know, all the things that we've seen in the videos all yeah, through the he's, years. He's, on, he's definitely underrated, not just as a 
performer, but as a bass player too. Yes, yes. So, so I ended up enjoying that show much more than I thought I was going to, hmm. in part just be- watching Rudy. He's just so yeah. entertaining. And the band was tight and it was good. And yeah, it's not the original members. And I'm the first to criticize that. But Rudy was just so entertaining that I actually enjoyed it. Well, you can look at it this way. If you go to see a tribute band or a Kiss, or maybe not Kiss, or a cover band, right? Mm-hmm. You, if you enjoy their music you, and it's a good band, you're still going to enjoy it. Yes. You do have one member who isn't who is not original, but he's known for the, the era, their most popular era. Absolutely. And you're hearing songs that, quite honestly, you don't really hear because they don't. I mean, I know recently they formed back together. So I can see how that was totally enjoyable. And yeah. look, that's a big, huge part of heavy metal history. You know, I always yes. say like between Def Leppard and Quiet Riot, you know, I feel like they were the, the two bands that really. Agreed. got heavy metal really really you know on the map you know with you know billboard topping hits 100 you know? 83 I mean, they, know, what about ACDC? A- 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 yeah they did but they weren't charting like these two bands did you agreed. know um, no, they ushered so. in the whole hair metal scene basically yeah mm-hmm. even though i obviously def leppard was not from los angeles but but still yeah. it was those two bands in 83 that really kicked off the whole scene so, but yeah, so I ended up enjoying that. And um, again, Rudy was just a freaking monster on bass. Absolutely enjoyed watching him. And then it was the final show of the weekend. <laughs> Very good. Um, and that's, of course, Bruce Kulik's band. And it's kind of sad in some ways because leading up to this weekend, not many people were even talking about Bruce Kulik and his band playing there. And I think in part that's because people just know they're going to deliver. You don't even have to, there's nothing to ask. There's nothing to question. And they delivered yet again, a friggin' a home run. And they played revenge front to back, all 11 songs. Um, Car jam. They did like the first half and then they segued into the song sword and stone um, rather than doing like the whole drum solo part. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bruce said they were going to take some liberties with that and you know, do some different things that Eric Carr had also played on. Um, and then after that, they did like a couple of what they do. Tears of Fallen, crazy nights and turn on the night, which I always love turn on the night live. Mm-hmm. And th- those guys just uh, friggin' monsters uh, they're so tight they, they do those songs so 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 good it's just you know exactly what you would expect when you see bruce and his mm-hmm. band it was freaking top notch of course peter came out we'll talk about that in a moment but i just wanted to talk about the the revenge show and all that i was just top notch absolutely top notch and that was the first time that was ever done right correct me if i'm wrong so you know what i was thinking bottom. about this i think that is the first time any kiss member or the band themselves did an album studio album mm-hmm. i know kiss toured for a live and they did a live front to back on the cruise as well it's the first time i think any band member has done a studio album from kiss front to back well, what about the ace freely when he did the solo album yes all right so in my mind that's a solo album but yes you're right oh, yeah, yes no, ace right. did the 78 solo album 100 percent. Right. yes right. that's that that's that's definitely fair um, I know on Kiss Cruise 5, what well, some people don't realize, Kiss actually did the entire Hotter Than Hell album on that tour over two different shows. The Electric, right, right. the Electric Sail Away and then the Indoor Show, they actually did all 10 songs from the album. But as a single performance. <clears throat> but as a single performance, right. Right, right. right. So yeah. Ace did the 78 solo album, which again, in my mind, is a solo album. It was the first true Kiss studio album. To my knowledge, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, the first true Kiss studio album that was performed front to back, although I will say there was a break after Spit is when Peter Chris came out. So there was that little break in there where they didn't do all 11 songs straight. And um, Now, was he supposed to come out? So we knew beforehand it was announced that Peter Chris was going to perform with Bruce. Again, nobody knew if he was going to just sing, play drums. As they're setting the stage up after Quiet Riot finishes, they wheel out a drum set and you know, it's, it's Brent's drum set. And then all of a sudden a second drum set's coming out and you can see it's DW drums. And I'm like, all right, well now there's two drum sets on stage. Peter's supposed to be playing them. One of them's DW. Peter's clearly playing drums. And then they take out these black cats and they put them near the drums. So you're like, all right, now there's no doubt about it at this point, Peter's playing drums with them for a song. I had heard two different things while I was there. I had heard hooked on rock and roll and I had heard dirty living. 
was the ones that he was going to play with Bruce. They ended up doing Hooked on Rock and Roll. Personally, I wish they had done Dirty Living because I seen Peter do Hooked on Rock and Roll in 2017. I've never seen Peter do Dirty Living, and I would have been dancing in the crowd and boogieing, you know. But um, but um, it was still fun to see him play drums with Bruce, and um, you know, again, Bruce always the gentleman is like, "Go ahead, Pete, sir, you cut it off, it count it off, or whatever." And um, it was fun seeing Bruce do his take and his solo on that song. That's uh, Peter's song from his 78 solo album. It, it was definitely, I happen to think the version Peter did with his solo band uh, with Sisters Doll in uh, 2017, I happen to like that better because it had the horns on it and all of that. But um, yeah, again, damn, this was, this is fun. Peter and Bruce performing together. If you would have told me 10 years ago that one time on stage, Peter and Bruce are going to perform together, I'd say no freaking way. Mm-hmm. No way. And then you, you, you rope that in with the weekend where Ace played with Peter, Ace, Vinny and Bruce played on stage together. It's like, like I kept telling everybody, are oh, you having a good time? How can I not have a good time? Mm-hmm. Look at all this freaking stuff that's going on. How can I not be having, even the yeah. stuff that I thought could have been better, whether I thought Vinny's performance could have been a little better, whether I wish Ace did a couple of other deep cuts. I still had a freaking amazing time. Mm-hmm. I still had an absolutely amazing time. So to me, it, it's well worth every penny. Well worth. In fact, I said to somebody last night, I'm going to see Molly Crew and Def Leppard and the ticket cost me whatever, $150 for a night out. And that's fine. This, you could have bought a ticket for $175 for a weekend, three nights of concerts. Mm. That's a steal yeah. to me. That's a yeah. steal. You know, so, yeah. And seeing all those legendary things that we just spoke about, it's, it's a no-brainer to me. It's an mm. absolute no-brainer. But that's my opinion. Did you see anything with, with the Bruce show that, that you picked up on from home? No, no, I mean, nothing more to add. I mean, I did see the hooked on rock and roll and the Peter mm-hmm. stuff. And, and, um, but, um, I did see, have you posted any of the other stuff from, cause I, I think I checked last night and the, you had added one more video from the previous day. Cause I saw you had a lull. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, well, I cause busy, I, but, you know, I, I was out at a lot of shows hours. yesterday. I was yeah. out at a lot of shows yesterday. Um, so I posted hooked on rock and roll. Mm-hmm. And I awesome. posted his performance at like four o'clock this morning when I woke up to catch my flight. I pro- posted his performance with Sisters Doll. I do have more of the Bruce stuff from last night that I'll post. And um, I do have some of the Trickster stuff uh, that I'll post. I think I took a little bit of uh, Quiet Riot. So I'll post all of that stuff in the next 20 20- Now that I'm home and I'm on a better internet, I could post it a lot quicker. But um, And I'm not at concerts. But um, So I did post some of that stuff, but, but not everything I have yet. Okay. So... You said you were hearing things about the meet and greets. Mm-hmm. What did you hear? I'm curious. Well, I saw Jason Herndon posted something. Okay. I don't know if you read this. I'm, gonna, I'm reading his post. Okay. Yeah. Here's what happened with the meet and greet. I'm assuming this is for, for Vinny. Here's what happened with the meet and greet for two ninety nine. You were to get one personal item signed, but when they lined up for the signing, they were told that certain items didn't qualify for the free item. Kisteria cases and history books were an additional $1,000. Mm-hmm. Posters were an additional. It got additional in bold. Additional, yeah. 350 Guitars were an additional 2000 and so on. You could get vinyl size signed as your free item, but if you got an additional record signed, it was $200 per LP. Mm-hmm. By contrast, any additional signatures for Ace and Bruce were fifty dollars each, and Peter was seventy-five, excluding guitars, which were extra. This is exactly what happened. And I am here, and I spoke to many people that were affected. Mm-hmm. Now, again, good look, bad look, however you want to talk about it. You know, I'm not saying all people are created equal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think that's outrageous. I'm, uh, quite honestly. Well, well, let there's two components of that to me that's worth talking about. First off, like okay. you like you said, there's the meet and greet, and you get one item signed. Now it's it's a known thing if if you get autographs that artists will not sign instruments, right? Peter won't sign drum heads. Ace won't sign guitars. As, as although although he'll in the past he signed drum heads that were he his that he right had right. Brought. You know. Right. But but if you're doing a meet and greet and you can get one item signed, you know, you can't bring your, your own guitar, you know, you can't right. bring your own drum head. Right. The, the, that's just that's common in the industry right now. Right. Um, so the fact that Vinny wouldn't sign a guitar or whatever, that's not surprising. What's shocking to me is that he wouldn't sign Kisteria. 
that he wouldn't sign the Kish 3 book. Um, or that that and not only would he not sign it, but if you wanted that sign, that it was an extra thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I I I I'm at a loss for it. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I always say this: I'm not the price police. It's not up to me to say what somebody should or shouldn't charge. If Vinny thinks he should charge a thousand and people pay for it, that's what he should charge. Right. And I don't know what people paid, right? There was a lot of talk about this yesterday there. A lot of people were upset that they had brought whatever they brought to get signs and they Vinny wouldn't sign it as the free item. Um, I did not hear that with any other artist that was there over the weekend that there were problems like that. Well, <laughs> look, you know, Gene Simmons once said right to my face with his hand on my face, mm-hmm. as I've said before, that he'd be nothing without people like me. You know, yep. we are the fans. I'm not saying we made them, but, but we did. We, <laughs> we did. did. We yeah. bought their product. Yeah. We love these guys, you know, different, different eras, different. The, everybody, the, the, you know, these artists always like we're giving back to the fans, all about the fans, all about the fans. You know, to me, it's like put up or shut up type of thing. Like, yeah. listen, come to some sort of nice common ground that's fair. Yeah. Not that's ridiculously like out of the stratosphere. And, you know, we know also that KISS fans will pay thousands upon thousands of dollars for experiences. You know, you spend thirty five hundred dollars on a KISS cruise or four grand, whatever you get a meet and greet and you get an assigned uh, bass guitar or a guitar. Yeah. You know, I mean, all right, I get that. Yep. You're getting a product that you didn't have in your hands. You know, so that makes a lot more sense to me. Yep. Some people could say that's even overpriced. I get that too. Yeah. You yep. know, but again, if Ace and Peter, original members, you know, are charging a certain thing, yeah, Vinny was Which, important. I, I think Ace was charging fifty dollars for an extra autograph, and so was yeah. Bruce. And I think Peter was seventy five. Again, I don't notice. I did not do any meet and greets, well, so this is all secondhand. He's a reliable guy, right? Yes. I mean, he knows. Yeah. He knows. So there's no reason and, to be. And I got this from a number of people. Like somebody sent me a screenshot while I was there, and it said that Vinny was also charging. I think it was eight hundred dollars for a signed baseball. And I know my response to somebody was, is that even a thing? Like, does somebody bring, like, does somebody have a case of Rollins with them and say, all right, Vin, I need these baseball signs? Like, who brings a baseball to a mm. show like this to get signed? I just, is that a thing? And maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yeah, uh, maybe so. some unique item. Like, how many, like you said, how many times are you going to have a unique Rollins baseball sign right. or original or right. Kiss members or whatever, you know, right. or whatever you want to say. And, and, you know, I just want to put, since I don't know this firsthand, there's always the chance that this is bs right but i don't think it is because i heard it from a dozen people yesterday mm-hmm. that were like what's with vinnie's prices 350 dollars to sign a poster and they still charge me 50 um yeah. it goes back to what i said before it's just it's a bad look you yeah. know it's it's a bad line. and that's where i get disappointed for vinnie because i i think most people they want him to succeed well, and then that happens exactly and that's kind of what i want to see say because there's any fan on this planet it's that's forgiving it's the kiss fan yes. whether you talk about all the bickering between ace and peter and this one and that one and then we always say all right we'll still do it and i mean some people fall off the map you know they do yeah but you know there's only i guess maybe there's unlimited forgiveness you know maybe there is i know with certain people but because these are your heroes kiss is always going to be kissed but mm-hmm. to your point it's a bad look and it, and when you want to in a lot of ways, I know you and I both have said you want to root for the guy. You know, you don't yes. want him to be disliked. You don't want, but then, you know, if you shoot yourself in the foot, how many times, you know, it's like, uh, for us, it's really hard to defend that. Yeah. It's really hard to say, well, I understand why. Well, I, I, I agree. Man, but, you know? you know, but I said this to people there yesterday because I truly believe this. If Vinny or anybody could charge $200 or 350 and people were going to pay it, then that's what he should charge, you know? I have to think, though, that Vinny took money out of his pocket by charging those prices. Because I think if he was charging 50 or 75, maybe even 100, people would have been like, yeah, look, I brought four albums. Let me get them all signed. You're charging 350. Somebody's like, for one album? Screw that. I'm not getting any of them signed. Mm. You know, uh, that's just speculation on my part. So I have to think from a business point. But again, I'm not there. I don't know. Perhaps. The market man- well, mandates and dictates those prices. I just, I heard too many people complain and think that that's the right market price. 
Well, refresh my memory. I think at one of the events, or maybe it was an event that you were at, all of a sudden he changed the pricing or he was going to sign four items or five items and then he made it one or two. So does, does some of this stuff happen sometimes? Or am I no, 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 my events, that never happened. Maybe it happened at another one and I, and I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah. I know when I was at Atlanta, 2018, I think it was $50 or $75 for yeah. an autograph. It was very reasonably priced. And I, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday that – I've defended the price of his private parties at $500. I've defended that for years because the first one I went to, it was two days events. You got food. I know people like to joke about the catering or whatever, but I got fed for two days mm -hmm. and I got five things signed. So if an autograph is $100 a per, uh, each, well, that's my $500 for the event. Right? I was thinking you were, were you supposed to get a poster? Something. Wasn't there something? Oh, yes. Yes. You're right. At the KISS the pre-cruise thing, I think we were supposed to get a signed post and, and we didn't. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Even when I went to the thing, I brought, <laughs> I, <laughs> I brought five items and I got two signed. I got to add another right. three things. And I was, I was like, all right, that's, that's great. Yep. You know, yep. I mean, I thought that was like a bonus, you know, that yep. absolutely. Absolutely. But again, I wasn't doing the meet and greets. So that didn't matter to me, but I just don't like to hear, other people complaining mm -hmm. about that. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate because again, I, the line was long to meet him very yeah. long. I saw a line through the hallway. People were excited to meet him. You just hate to see people leaving with a negative feeling, whether it's justified or not, you know, if people are leaving with a negative feeling, that's how they feel, mm. you know? So you just hate to see that. It's a, it's a shame to me. Yeah. But saying that, like I said, I had three days, total fun. Um, worth every penny to me. Um, yeah. Do I wish maybe some things were a little bit different? Maybe, but that doesn't matter. It, for me, it was a 10 out of 10 weekend. I'm super excited. If Neil does another event like this in a year or two, whatever, I would definitely do it again. Um, well worth it. And, you know, even for me, just hanging out with people all weekend, you know, and I had lunch with Brian Carvel, you know, on, on Saturday, I think it was. I had dinner one night with these guys, Ron and Doyle, who they invited me. They saw I was going to go have dinner by myself. And like, hey, come with me. You know, I hung out with Jason yesterday for a while and Pat and Carol. It was just I had Billy and Lisa I hung out with. It's like all weekend. I'm just talking with people, hanging out. Like I said, people coming to me all weekend. That's half the fun. Just like talking and mingling with fans. So some of this other stuff, it almost like doesn't. I know it's a lot for people to comment online. How could somebody do this? How could somebody do that? I was there just having a great friggin' time and I wasn't doing meet and greets and uh, fine. Somebody only played an hour and said an hour and a half, uh, whatever. Somebody didn't play. I need your love. Uh, who cares? I still had a great friggin' time. It was a great weekend. That's good. I'm glad you got your money's worth. No regrets. That's no regrets. No regrets. None. Zero. None. Zilch. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> was there anything else from the weekend that you saw online that, that we're not bringing up? No, I don't think so. Well, then on that note, my friend, like I said, I called you the second I got in. <laughs> it was this. I'm actually now going to go upstairs, eat for the first time in like nine hours since I woke you and up. You both. I haven't eaten. I mean, I had my coffee, but I'm like, I'm starving. But, but you weren't up at four in the morning to catch a flight no. like I was. And, no, um, no, no, no. I woke up after nine. So, yeah. I've, and yeah. hopefully next time if they do one of these, you'll be there again with me. I will, I will definitely consider that. Excellent. On that editor's note, everybody. Double oh, Ringo. I like, I, like your, I like your approach. Yeah, it's, it's like coming from the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let us know what you thought about the event. If you were there in person, let us know. If you were just watching online, let us know what you thought. And um, I look forward to all the comments. Everybody that was there, it was great seeing you. Thanks again for coming up, saying hello. Until the next episode, thanks everybody. Take care. Alrighty, there you have it. Once again, we'd like to hear your thoughts and your comments about Creatures Fest. And also, when you comment, let us know if you attended or if you were just watching the clips online. As I said during the chat, I had an amazing time. And I just want to thank Neil and his entire team for a wonderful weekend filled with lots of great memories. I had a blast. Thanks so much, guys. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, 
where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.